Welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily. In today's episode, I have a mega video of 23 of my favorite projects from the year 2023. I am so excited to show you all of these. I'm excited to know if yours made the list. If you have any ideas for any projects you'd like to see me tackle in 2024, leave me a note down in the comments and let me know what you would like to see. If you like crafting, DIYs, dupes, hacks, thrift flips, or just creating in general, I would love if you would consider subscribing. If you like any of today's projects or your favorite made the list, remember to hit that thumbs up. Let's go make some DIYs. I picked up this little picture at the thrift store because I actually really liked the frame of it. And when I got it, I had no idea what I wanted to do with it. And it ends up being kind of a detailed project, a lot of little components that go into it, but I love how it turns out in the end. Now the backing of it just had that paper on there and it was glued on so well. <laughs> These little staples are so hard to get out here. It reminds me of when you're deconstructing a canvas. So I just remove all of those to get to the frame. And I'm just using some form foam core board. Gosh, that was hard for me to say. Some foam core board, but you could easily use like some cardboard, uh, even like the uh, paper, like the actual picture, the matting that came in, it would work. Just anything for a sturdy background there. And I'm taking just some scrapbook paper that looks like some wood slats here. I thought that that would be really cute to use. Now I'm just taking some white wax. So the white wax is going to brighten up this frame and I'm just going through, this frame has a lot of texture and a lot of grooves. That's why I thought it would be perfect to use this on. So I'm giving it a very good coat. Now this stuff goes on quite thick. It's a little bit different uh, consistency than paint is. And so you're going to be able to kind of wipe it off. So once I get it covered on there and let it dry a little bit, I'm just taking my baby wipe and I'm just wiping around all of the edges where all those ridges and the texture is to kind of have that show through. I thought that that would be such a fun aged look, just a different distressing technique. And you can see how cute it's going to look with the contrast with that paper, that board that we have. Now I got a new glue gun, you guys. I'm loving this. This is a cordless glue gun and I've had that glue gun I've used in my other DIYs for years and years. So I'm so excited to use this, but I'm just hot gluing this piece in here and I think it looks really good so far. Now these windows came from Dollar Tree. They have a couple different types. If you have a chance to pick up the flat ones that are not these plastic three-dimensional ones, I think this would go a lot quicker or else use some spray paint. For whatever reason, I just decided to hand paint this and it did take a little bit of time just because of all those little nooks and crannies that you have to get paint into. But I'm just covering it with some white paint. Now maybe you could even find these in a white color. Whenever I find them at Dollar Tree, they're in always like these really like almost like a lavender color or that yellow color. So after I paint that, I just take a wooden tag. You can pick these up at Dollar Tree. You can buy them unfinished in bundles on Amazon. And I paint mine black to look like a chalkboard. And now I'm just going to distress all of the edges to it. So I'm just sanding all around really good to have it look. You can see there what it ends up looking like. Now this part is up to you what you decide to do, what you put on your little tag here. I have this little word hello on a chalk couture stencil here that I'm going to use. You'll see what ends up happening. It doesn't end up turning out the greatest, but I think it ends up uh, like a happy accident. But I'm just using my chalk couture uh, chalk paste here to go over this stencil. You could use your Cricut. You could handwrite something. Uh, you could print something on some tissue paper and decoupage it on there. But look at when I pull this back, you can kind of see it looks like it didn't really transfer the best, but I thought, hey, I'm really going for that distressed look. So let me just kind of touch it up a teeny bit. So that way you can at least see all of the letters. And I kind of embraced that rustic look that it came with it and decided I would just go with it. And so I ended up really liking it. But again, it was just a happy accident. So now I'm just going to take my window and line it up on my frame here. And you can kind of see how I'm going to put this together. I'm just using my hot glue to glue this on. You could use something a little bit extra if you wanted to. I felt like hot glue is going to be just fine for this project. Just wherever I could get a little extra glue onto there. And then I'm just going to line that up. I just eyeball everything when I line it up. So if you need a measure, definitely do that. Now I had tied this rope onto the tag there and I liked having it look like there was rope tied onto it, but I didn't like the tails hanging off of there. So I decided to glue those down on the back. And I'm just taking a little sprig of some boxwood here. This just comes from Walmart. I love their boxwood. I keep it in my stash all the time. And then I'm just, uh, I wound a couple pieces together there with some twine and I just glued it on kind of at an angle there. 
I did make a little twine bow for the little tag there, but I just think this turns out so cute. I love all the different elements to it. I love the look of the rustic barn wood with that gothic window and the greenery. I just think this all pulls together really beautifully. Do you guys like this one? This was the perfect craft my stash item for me and I have a bunch of Hobby Lobby clearance items that I just keep a big bin of. You guys know I'm a big fan of checking out that sale section at Hobby Lobby and I had this sign that came from there that was like, I can't remember what the price tag just said on there, $1.50 or something. And then I have this candlestick, which is concrete. It was very heavy. And I knew when I bought it that I wanted to do some type of riser with it. So I'm just showing you guys, look, I'm actually measuring something. <laughs> I don't measure anything so I really had to point out that I actually tried with this one uh, I just found the center and then traced around that now I have this big long piece of trim this just came from my hardware store you can just buy it down where the um, like your baseboards they'll have like trim on that aisle too and I've made several projects out of using this so I just cut it at a 45 degree angle I measured the size that I needed and I did just use my handsaw I didn't use like a table saw or anything to do this I just use my miter box like little miter box table saw hand saw, excuse me, uh, to do that, which I'll have linked down in my description box because I love using that. So, and it's, it's very simple. And then um, I just measured these to be a little bit less than what the sign was because I wanted them to be a little bit of trim here because that is going to be the flat part of my riser. And then I just used some super glue to glue these down. Hot glue would probably work, but I just felt like super glue was going to give me a closer fit uh, and it was going to work a little bit better over time. So that was why I chose to do that. Um, now the sign has a little bit of raised text and this is the type of super glue that I work with all the time. So I'm just showing either of these. Now the sign had a little bit of a raised area. I should have sanded that off, but I didn't realize at the time it was going to be an issue. So I'm just pointing that out now. Now I'm just using some E6000 and some hot glue in the areas where the E6000 is not. So that can kind of give me the quick hold and then the E6000 can dry and give me the permanent hold. Now, of course, as I'm gluing this on right now, I'm realizing that I forgot to take the price tags off of the back. <laughs> so I do go in and take that off so you can't see it, but uh, remove that beforehand. But for some reason, it just didn't dawn on me until after I glued it down and I went, whoops. So I spray painted this outside because it's finally warm enough to spray paint at my house. And I'm just showing that on these edges here, we're going to put some antiquing wax to get in all of the little grooves of those pieces. Now, those trim pieces are completely optional. If you don't want to mess around with having to go get something extra or you don't want to cut anything, I get it. Uh, totally optional, just a different um, thing of decoration. I just kind of love embellishing things in different ways. So you can see that I put a pretty heavy coat of antiquing wax on this trim here uh, and then wiped it off. So it just kind of helped pop all of those little nooks and crannies there. It kind of helps to see the detail. And then I do brighten up the top of it with a little bit of chalk paint dry brushing over it. And then here I'm just distressing the edges with some antiquing wax around the whole thing to kind of give it um, that aged look. So it, so not just the trim was um, aged with the antiquing wax. So I just go around all of the edges. I also go around on the candlestick portion. I don't think I show that on here, but I did do that. So look at how absolutely darling this looks. I think this is beautiful. I really think that trim sets this off. Now I really wanted to do something extra here. So um, to put on the top of it, I've seen like rustic metal pieces on the top of risers. So I bought this at the wedding section at Hobby Lobby, which is the best kept secret Hobby Lobby has for crafters is the wedding section. Always check there. This was like, I can't even remember how much it said, $1.50 I think it said on this little tin bucket here. And I'm using just some regular like white vinegar, just the kind you buy in the big jug. I use it like in my dishwasher to help my dishes um, and some paper towels. I'm trying to age this. I've never done this process before. So this was totally new to me. So I soaked all of these uh, paper towels very liberally in the vinegar and I am just putting them all around um, the metal on here. And um, I, I read this on Pinterest to do this. I've also seen some other uh, crafters do um, this on a smaller scale with like safety pins and bells and things. Um, and so I'm just like, you can see here, I'm just gonna set that down. And I, th I did, this was probably about noon that I put this on here and I came and checked this. This is probably about five in the afternoon uh, or the evening. And you can see how much rust is showing on here now and how it's dulled down that shininess on here. And I decided at this point that I want a little more rust. I mean, you can easily leave it like this, but I mean, this is like five to six hours or something. So I put it all back on 
and then I leave it overnight. So if you really want it to be really rusty, do this and leave it for 24 hours uh, and see what happens here. Um, so this is the next day I'm taking this out and you can see the paper towels are showing like tons of rust there and you can see how aged that gets. Now I think because I placed the paper towels so close to it that maybe if I'd let a little oxygen get in there, the reaction might've happened a little bit more on the things. But I mean, I'm extremely happy for my first time with how this came out and it was such a fun process to do. It it does smell like vinegar so keep it in your garage if it's gonna bother you mine was just in my basement and really I couldn't smell it uh, unless I was right next to it so I'm cleaning off the bottom because my intention was to glue it to the top of this riser and this is what I would have used to do that and some hot glue for the temporary hold and then either super glue or e6000 for that permanent hold but I decided not to do that. So I'm just showing you that that's how you would glue it on. But I thought the versatility would be much greater to leave it not glued to it. So here it is just on its own. It's darling. It definitely has that farmhouse look. I mean, I'm thinking next, I'm like, I wanna get a big Rubbermaid bin to do this in with some watering cans or something. But here it is on top of the riser. I think it looks darling on there. What do you guys think of this process? Is that something that you would try? Every once in a while you need a DIY or a craft or a flip that is super quick and easy but turns out absolutely darling and this is exactly that. I picked this tag up at Hobby Lobby's clearance. It was like less than $2 but you guys Dollar Tree has tags and so does Dollar General you can get tags anywhere to make cute little signs like this but I loved that it had the ticking stripe already on it and I wanted to try and save that. And I also wanted to save this twine because it was a very good quality of twine and I love how they had it tied. And so it was just a matter of untying it and then I was able to pull that off. Now on the back side of this, there was quite a few stickers on there. So I just used my heat gun to zap those and get those off. And then I'm just sanding off the word kitchen. Now this is black paint that this is painted on with. And so it's going to maybe not sand the best, but that is the best way I could think of to get this off of here. And I was just trying to avoid that ticking stripe because I really just wanted to leave it on there. Like I said, I wanted to do as like the most minimal on this, but make it look very different than it did in the beginning. Kind of have the same vibe, but I just didn't need it to say kitchen. So I'm just very carefully taking my brush. This is just some white chalk paint that I have on here. And I'm just going to very carefully go up to that ticking stripe and then paint down towards the um, tie on the sign there on the little tag. That way um, I can keep that ticking stripe and I can cover it up with that paint. And I do go over all of the sides as well and just recoat this with that paint. And it was close enough to the same color that I didn't have to worry about the lines on the ticking stripe. After it dried, I did just rough it up with my emery board here. I went around the edges because I wanted it to have that nice farmhouse worn vibe to it, that look. And you can see I'm just going along all of the edges here as well, just to kind of sand down that paint. I, there's something so satisfying to me about distressing items like this and having it look. I know it's definitely a matter of personal preference, so you're just going to do what works for you when you're doing items like this. But for some reason, when I start distressing those edges and you can kind of see some character come out in the pieces, I just feel like they come to life. Now this is a rub-on transfer from Dollar Tree and it was a little long for the tag and I'd had this in mind thinking this is what I wanted to use but when I pulled it out you can see clearly it was a little bit too long so I thought well maybe if I cut it up and kind of it had a curve to it so I wanted the curve to look good on there and this does look cute if I had gone this direction I think that would have been fine but when I was looking at it it just didn't feel right to me and so I thought okay I'll save that for another project. I have a bunch of different Dollar Tree rub-on transfers. So I pulled them all out and I found this one that said, welcome home. And when I placed it on there and it had that little line between the welcome and the home, it was just perfect with that ticking stripe. I thought that I had found exactly what it needed to be. So I just placed that on there. I line it up to get it as straight as I can. You can always use a ruler if you like to, to get things exactly straight. I feel like I do a pretty good job just kind of eyeballing it, but I'm just using just a little piece of wood here, like a crafting stick or something like that to rub this on. It comes on or it rubs on extremely easy and you just go back and forth until that design is completely. And you can see as you're rubbing it, 
it transferring onto your surface so you know when to peel it back. After I peeled that back, I took my little piece of wood here and I just kind of made a couple little scratches into it to kind of give it a little bit of a different aged look. Again, I don't know that I would do that again if I <laughs> was to make this over, but it just in the moment, it felt like something I wanted to do, so I just went with it. And now I'm just taking my brush that I used to paint the tag. The paint in it was fairly dry, and I'm just going over that uh, rub-on transfer. That's going to make it look a little bit aged. It's not gonna be so shiny. It's gonna look like it was uh, printed directly onto this tag here. And I also go over the ticking stripe as well to give it a little bit of a worn look. And then I'm just going to re-put on this twine here. You guys, this is so simple. I mean, I just fed it back through and tied it exactly the way that it came. That's all it took for this simple little flip. I think it turned out darling. You guys are going to have to let me know down in the comments what you think of this one because I really love this thicker tag. I think it turned out beautiful. I But I think the thin tags that you get like at Dollar Tree or Dollar General, you could make something super cute as well. Embellish it however you want and it's going to be perfect to have as a little accent piece in my decor. This darling sign came from Etsy and it is darling the way that it is, but it is the perfect shape for exactly what I would like to do. They're having such amazing clearance right now and I love that you can see it was $25 and I paid less than $5 for it. So it's definitely a bargain. Always check out that clearance section or the sales section at your local craft store or home decor store. And just keep in mind that you can always repurpose things. Now this chicken is absolutely adorable, but I did need to sand the surface on this sign because I wanted my paint to stick to it really well and it kind of had a texture on it that I wanted to rough up a bit so my paint really would stick really well to it. I'm going to try a crackle technique on this sign here and so I want my base color to be um, kind of a dark brown and as I was doing this I do end up adding a little bit of white. I'll show you that in just a moment and kind of show you why I did that but I just make sure that I get every edge of the sign. Now a sign from Dollar Tree would work fine. Some scrap wood would work fine. You just basically want this general shape and I wanted this to kind of look like wood coming through or have just a couple different dimensions or uh, elements of paint coming through and so I dry brush some white onto here and I'm really happy with how this all comes together in the end so even though I don't love the way it looks right here while I'm doing this it comes out really well in the end with the crackle technique on it so I just make sure to pounce a little bit of that white paint on the sides too so that way the whole sign looks cohesive so this is a crackle medium you can get it in spray form you can get it in liquid form like this uh, there's several different brands this is folk art and you're I just placed it down on my sign and you're going to paint all over the entire sign and you can see how glossy it looks there once you get everything done read your instructions and let your uh, item sit for as long as the instructions say so mine said to let it sit for an hour for that to completely dry so now I'm just taking some green. Uh, this is just some acrylic paint. It is eucalyptus leaf, I believe the color said there. And I am just going to paint this over the entire sign. Now you want to make sure that when you're using a crackle medium, you do not paint over the area that you've already done. You don't keep going back over it because you will disturb the process. So that's why you can kind of see me working in sections here. And you can already see in that first area the crackle is starting to take effect. Now, I the crackle medium is something that's been around for a long time. I think it's kind of gaining a little bit more popularity now. So I was so excited to be able to use it and kind of show you how uh, this works. You can see there how that crackle starts to look. I just love it. Now, while this paint was a little bit wet, I took my finger inside of a baby wipe and ran al went along some of the edges. This sign had kind of a natural wood edge to it that kind of had some uh, like cut marks in it. And so I just went along with my finger along each of those. So that way uh, to kind of distress it a little bit more, kind of a wet distressing here. So that way the edges of these little details on the sign kind of popped. So, so if your sign doesn't have that, obviously you may want to skip this step here, but just showing you that when you have fun little detailed edges or things like that, it makes them pop a little bit more if you do kind of do a little bit more distressing. Now I know at Walmart, your craft store, a lot of different places are starting to carry a huge amount of these wood cut letters. 
So you don't have to do this. You can use stenciling. You can do a Cricut. Uh, you can hand do it. You can print on tissue paper. But I just wanted to show you all these different types of letters that I found at Hobby Lobby. They also had these darling galvanized letters, which would have been really cute. Of course, you just want to pay attention to the price of them. I am just doing these letters right here that spell the word herbs. I thought this would be perfect for my porch this summer. So that way I could have a cute little herb garden. And I just thought the colors on this sign were so cute. I did take a little antiquing wax around the edge of all of these letters to kind of help them pop a little bit more. And I'm just using some super glue. Uh, this is like the DAP brand that I get at Lowe's. Uh, Gorilla Glue, any kind of glue, even the stuff you get at Dollar Tree would work fine. Uh, I really like using that on these letters with the paint. I feel like you get a really good bond and I don't have a problem with them sticking or coming off or anything like that. And you do have a few seconds of time to be able to move your letters around after you place them down so you can kind of manipulate them a little bit but look at how darling this sign turns out i love this it's going to be perfect for my porch i love the colors and the contrast and you can see with the crackle how you get both the white and the brown from behind and i think that really adds such a darling element to this sign what do you guys think of this do you like this this is such a fun, easy project here. I have this, I got it at Hobby Lobby. You can see it was like $2.99 that I got. And I'm just removing the sticker off of the front here. I removed it off the back as well. And this is a great sign for what it is, but we're going to change it up. I love looking through the clearance section at Hobby Lobby or even Walmart uh, to find signs that are on sale that maybe weren't so popular or left behind because as a crafter, I love to change things up and repurpose them and use them for my own. And so I'm just using a, a fingernail file. I love using a fingernail file in my crafting to sand. Um, I just, I can manipulate it really well. I just really love using those. So I sand off all of the words. Now I'm showing you there, this is from Dollar Tree right here and you could definitely use this. I have some other, something else in mind for it or else I probably would have used that. So if you see those at Dollar Tree, pick, pick them up and that way you can continue on with the project very easily. So now I'm just taking some white chalk paint and I'm just gonna cover up that area that I sanded. We're gonna put something over the top of this so you're not really gonna see it, but I just wanted to make sure it was kind of uniform. Now, this is from the Dollar Tree calendars from this year and it's from the February page. And I, this is the farmer's market and you can see here this one, I couldn't use the front because it, the, the words were a little too long for my thing. You can see the front says farmer's market, the actual page says garden on there. Look at these cute, I'm so excited to use this calendar in so many different projects. So I kind of used my thumbnail, you can kind of see the indentation. I laid that on my sign and kind of did that around the edges. So I had a template of where to cut. Now the front page, if you can use on your surface, is a little bit thicker. And so just to let you guys know when you do uh, your crafting, but it had that words on the bottom of it that said like 2023 calendar or something. I don't want that on my DIY. <laughs> so that's why I'm using the actual page here, but I just think this is so beautiful. Now I'm just using some Elmer school glue. You guys know that this is like my best friend with crafting. I have, and it's particularly this purple Elmer school glue. I never have any problem with it peeling up, especially if you like on a paper project like this, if you seal it at the end with some uh, spray uh, clear coat or Mod Podge or something like that. But I really find that I have l a lot less wrinkling than I do with Mod Podge. Mod Podge and me sometimes get along, sometimes we don't. And I really feel like I always get along with this school glue here. So I glued the surface there, put it all over, and then I just do the edges of the paper as well because I want that double bond. And I want to make sure that you get all of the edges because that way when you place this on, it's not going to peel up. So I'm just checking the back to make sure I have it set correctly because it's got a little stand on it. I didn't want to do it upside down because I'm notorious for doing stuff like that and having to redo it. So I'm just carefully lining up the edges here and then I'm working from the center out to help push this down and alleviate or eliminate any uh, wrinkles that you might have. And you can kind of see I'm rubbing some if I start to get any wrinkles and just very lightly push this out. And depending on how thick your paper is, is you'll kind of, you just don't want it to tear or anything like that. Now I do have this Mod Podge roller here. I'll link that down in my description box. I love this thing. And it really helps just kind of get a really good bond between that paper and the surface that you're working with. And then I did just pull my little Cricut scraper out. You can find these at Dollar Tree now. They're really, it's not the Cricut brand, it's a Dollar Tree brand, but I mean, it works just the same. 
and I just kind of help flatten that out. Now I'm taking this little stencil brush and I just kind of dipped it in some white paint and I'm just kind of going to make this look a little more aged than it looked completely optional, completely a matter of personal preference. I just feel like sometimes it takes a sheen off of the paper so it doesn't look super glossy. So it, it looks kind of more, I don't know, less like a calendar page and more like a, a piece of art, I guess. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so, but I just love how this turns out and I think it is so cute. It was so simple, so inexpensive and Dollar Tree has some really great pictures. So hopefully you can find some of these calendars or use this idea from maybe an older calendar that you have from last year. It's a, such a fun project and so perfect for springtime. I absolutely love to make different risers and I found this sign at Hobby Lobby. You can use any sign from Dollar Tree, even some scrap wood, but you can see here I paid about $5 for it. It was part of the spring clearance and it does have this raised paint on it to kind of give it some texture or anything. Now I'm not going to want that on my riser so we'll deal with that in just a moment. But then I wanted to try something new for the legs. They had these like thread spools. These were just over in their wood pile section where all of their wood crafts were. So all I'm going to do is take a putty knife. Uh, you could just immediately go to a sander if you wanted to do that. I just had my putty knife handy and so I thought I would try and scrape this paint off this way. And it actually works pretty good. I do still end up sanding it. So it just kind of depends on what you would want to do. But I'm just showing you how you would kind of turn an everyday sign that you might already have in your stash or something like this. Don't let it stop you from using it or repurposing it. So as you can see that paint just scrapes right off of there so I can make it all flush because I am going to want to set things on here. Now I'm just taking a sanding block and I'm going over. This is just to make it really smooth so that way you can have a smooth surface. You can see all of the paint dust that you get on there. So you want to wipe it off pretty good. It does kind of make a little bit of a mess. Now I'm just taking some black chalk paint to go over this. I go over just with one coat. I had some of these sponge rollers left over from a crafting night that I did with some friends. They weren't the biggest fans of these. I thought I would try it. It worked all right. I wouldn't like run out to specifically get these for any projects, uh, but I had it in my stash. I thought I would try it. I know some people are really big fans of them though. So now for the feet I do the same thing just a coat of black chalk paint on all of the feet here just to make sure that they're going to look cohesive here and just go around them. I used kind of a dowel there to help me get around each of the feet to make it a little bit easier. Now I know everything comes full circle and I've seen a lot of crafters start using this crackle medium. This is Folk Arts brand. There's several different type. I had used this like long like 15, 20 years ago, it was kind of like all the rage. And I think it's, like I said, everything comes full circle. So it's kind of coming back in to try this type of distressing. Now I love to try different things on here, kind of change it up a little bit, show you all different techniques. So that's why I'm showing this to you. And it was kind of fun trying this process again. So you paint your base coat on whatever you want the crackle color to show through. And then you use your crackle medium. You can get it in a spray form. You can get it in this liquid form like I have. And you're just going to go over your entire piece. You do want to make sure that this crackle medium dries for the time that it says. So on mine, it said about an hour. So I definitely let it sit for that time. Then you take your top color that you're going to use for your actual color. In my case, this is a riser. I wanted my riser to be white with the black distressing coming through. And when you're painting this on, you want to work quickly and you want to make sure that you do not disturb the paint that you've already put down. So you're not going to go over areas that you've already placed your paint down because it will disturb the process. And you can kind of see in that first area that I worked that the crackle is already starting to take effect and the reaction is starting to happen. Basically, as your paint dries, the crackle medium makes your paint kind of shrink. And so what happens is it starts to crackle and you see that background of the contrasting color come through. Now there are so many fun ways and techniques that you can do with this method of different colors you can play around with. It is definitely fun and I was happy to kind of see it come back because it, it's been a long time since I've done this method and I thought it was a lot of fun. You can see here that crackling, how it took effect and it, I think it looks great, very chippy um, and very fun. So I did the same thing. I had put that medium on the feet and then did the same thing on those. Now on the back of my sign, it had these little D rings on there. So I just removed those so I can place my feet on and I'm just going to use a combination of wood glue and hot glue. The hot glue is just going to work as a clamp. It is totally fine to use the two glues together. There's not going to be any reaction that happens. that's going to cause any problems. 
And so don't fill, um, just leave a little space of the blank wood for the hot glue to adhere to. So that way you can definitely get that bond and that clamping process can happen. And I just kind of used my finger up against the edge that was on the back of that sign there to help get it level. And look at what a cute riser this is. I mean, even with some scrap wood, this would be a beautiful project to make. I loved that it was just a sign. I just had to paint it and glue some feet onto it to make a simple riser. This is something I can use all year long. This summer, I'm going to use this out on my porch as a cute little accent piece. I have a lot of these pictures in my stash that come from home decor stores when they go on sale and they're perfect to use for projects like this. Now I have these stencils that I got from Essential Stencils and I'm just deciding which one to use here and I thought this one would look really, really cute. So I'm excited to try this. This is the first time that I've used Essential Stencils and I'm very impressed. I, I have anticipate more coming because it was so fun to use. Now, and it turns out beautifully. Now on this picture, you can see how there's this natural wood finish to the background. Obviously I'm going to paint over where the words are so we can put our stencil on there, but I thought it would be kind of fun and an interesting look, kind of different to tape around the border here and make kind of like a mat framing the area where my stencil is going to look. So it's going to be like a faux photo mat or something. Anyhow, so I tape all the way around just one little section of my painter's tape. That was kind of my trick to make the stencil fit on here. It looks really good in the end, so I'm excited to see uh, show you guys what it looks like. So I'm just taking some white chalk paint. Uh, I believe this is just kind of an off-white color. I thought that would look best for the stencil that I was going with so that way I could have the colors of the stencil show up really well on here. And I'm just going over the border of this tape here to make sure that I get a crisp line. It takes about two coats of paint. I did one coat and it gave pretty good coverage, but I could still see a little bit of that original saying on there. So just two coats of the chalk paint over this gave me a clean surface to work with for my stencil and it also covered up the complete design in the background there. So now I'm just grabbing my stencil and I'm centering it the best that I can there. If you're a measurer, you can definitely get out a ruler or some way to measure it here. I did just kind of eyeball it here using like spacing with my finger there from the edges to get it straight. And I did use some painter's tape to tape it down because I didn't want this moving at all because I do want to use a couple of different colors on the stencil. And so when I go from one color to the next, I don't want this to move or budge or anything like that. So just a little bit of painter's tape. I did all four corners and then a little bit on each of the sides. Now Essential Stencil has these wonderful stencil brushes. They come in a variety of sizes here. This is just the pack that has all of these different sizes and these totally make the difference when doing stenciling. So I've in the past used like Dollar Tree stencil brushes and you guys, it is worth the investment to get some good stencil brushes. These cleaned up so nice and they really did make such a big difference. This turns out so awesome. Now. I'm using either a pouncing motion or a swirling motion. The swirling motion made sure that I got into all of the little areas there. That's what ended up working the best, but sometimes around the edges and some of those letters, a pouncing motion would work if the swirling was kind of not getting what you needed there. And you can just see exactly what I'm doing there. I pounce and I swirl, just kind of a combination of both of them. And where the stencil is taped into place, it's going to hold that so you're not going to have any bleed through or anything. Now I was really careful around Around these tires on this truck design. I really wanted there to be the black tires. So I was really careful. However, there was some edges up close to the bed of the truck there that I could not quite reach as well with the stencil brushes I wanted. So I did just grab another little thin brush that I had and just kind of lightly went around that area with that being careful not to go at all under the stencil just to do a little bit of the detail work. Now I pulled out my trusty vintage duck egg that I have been loving the last couple of months because I thought that would be the perfect color to do kind of a muted turquoise truck here, that teal farmhouse truck that's so popular and I do love that color and I thought it needed some type of pop of color on there and especially where I'm going to do the apples red, I thought this blue would be a beautiful contrast. So this has got some really wide areas of paint there so you just want to make sure you may have to do a couple of coats to get the coverage depending on your paint and what kind of brush strokes you want in there. And I decided as I was doing this, I get to this part and there's like the little wood slats on the back of the truck bed. 
I decided I would leave those and do them with some brown paint and I'm just taking a little thin brush because it was such a small area and just going over that as thinly as I can. And I tried to remember when I was doing this that it is supposed to look like wood. So if the coverage isn't super dark or it's a little sparse, it probably will look just like natural wood slats. So I was very careful doing this, but I didn't get like total full coverage. I just picked a deep red to do the apple color. I thought the contrast with the red in that truck would be really beautiful to have that nice deep red on there. Now the stencil did have areas for like stems on the apples and I chose not to go in and paint those with my brown paint. I was worried about how the, it would look on top of my red paint and I didn't want to get too tedious or have any bleed through. I just wanted to keep it as simple as I could. So that's a matter of personal preference what you decide to do there. But I did just make sure that I got all the coverage that I wanted to on those apples before uh, let them dry and if I wanted to go back in I did that. Now I'm just removing the tape from the stencil that's holding it in place and that way I can get this pulled up and show you guys the reveal here when I pull this back. I really think you're going to love how this turns out. It's always that moment of like, oh, I hope this turns out when you peel this back. But look at how good it looks. It's beautiful. I love that color of the truck. Now there was a couple of areas and I mean just the smallest of areas that honestly, if you weren't looking super close at it, like I was going, oh, I probably ought to clean this up. I just take a little bit of white paint on my brush and you can kind of see, I mean, who would have seen that area anyway? But it's always best to go ahead and clean it up if you can see a little area that needs a little work like that. And now you guys know how to do that. It's really easy to go in there and just kind of make those lines really crisp and really clean. So now let's go ahead and remove the tape on the sides here. So I'm just carefully taking each one and peeling that back, making sure that I have some crisp lines on these that I had no bleed through or anything like that. As I'm peeling it back, I'm loving the color that matches. It matches with that truck quite well because it does kind of have a little bit of a blue undertone to it. And I think it just looks really good. It takes up a good portion of the frame there. Now there was a teeny bit of bleed through right here. So how I corrected that was I just took my weeding tool and I'm just scraping a little bit, just very lightly scratching that chalk paint off of that surface. I'm just using a baby wipe to wipe it back. All in all, I think this turns out absolutely beautiful. I loved using this stencil. I'll leave a link to essential stencils if you wanna check them out down in my description box. But I think this is gonna be a great addition to my fall decor. Even if I was to decorate with apples all year, I think that this would be just a beautiful piece to have, or even just if these were my colors and I just wanted that farmhouse look, I just think this turned out great. What do you guys think of this project? I love looking through the seasonal sections of the thrift stores and finding all the fun finds. This little tin spoke to me and I thought it was so cute. However, I wanted to kind of leave. I like the season's greeting on the other side and I may do something with it for Christmas, but I kind of liked the back side. I actually liked that seam coming through and I have this little stencil from Dollar Tree that I thought would be so cute on here. So I am just wiping this up. Now this was not actual rust. I think it was painted to look rusty like this. Uh, so it wiped up really well and I just taped down this stencil so I didn't have to hold it with my fingers that way I could sit here and do everything I needed to to get this stencil transferred on here but not have the stencil slipping from side to side or anything so I just put a couple little pieces of painters tape on there now I'm just using a stencil brush from Dollar Tree I'm just pouncing up and down in a motion I do a little bit of swirling somebody mentioned to me that that works pretty well so I just you just want to make sure that you don't have a ton of paint on your brush because that's when you start to have that seepage that comes with going underneath the stencil and, and creating all that mess that you really don't want there so you can kind of just see I'm going like around in a little bit of a circle or a pouncing motion either way just making sure that all of those areas get covered now when I'm doing this I do let it completely dry and I do a second coat because I wanted that to be a little bit thicker on here I think it transfers really nice though you can see when I take this off I think it looks really good I'm just trying to make sure that there's no places that I want to go back because once you um, take that off it's really hard to match everything up but if you bend it down and there's a spot you maybe didn't get as well you can kind of place it back over and touch it up 
there was a little spot on the edge you could see that I needed to wipe with just like a wet paper towel or a baby wipe to get off that I kind of had gone over on the side of the stencil. That cleaned up really, really easy. Now I'm just taking my emery board. I love using fingernail files for distressing and sanding because I love how easily you can handle them and they get into the little small areas. Now I do want to just let you know that obviously if you want to leave the stencil just fine how it was in the beginning, it looked beautiful that way. I love pieces when I'm making them to look like they have a history. They've got a good story to tell. Uh, there's something that's been around for a little while. So that is part of why I love distressing pieces. That is, I know it's a matter of personal preference. I feel like I probably am a broken record saying that over and over, but every time I distress anything, I will have somebody comment on, oh, you ruined it. it that's fine if you think that. I mean, that's up to you, what you do with your distressing on there and, and whatnot. So now I'm just taking a little bit of green paint here. Um, this is um, like a eucalyptus color, I believe is what it is. And I'm just smearing a teeny, teeny bit. I wanted it to look like it had a patina, like it's been aged, has that history, has a long story that it's just been left out somewhere. And I just go wherever I feel just so lightly and then on the edges when I do it here like I do it on the little um, wires that go up over to here you can see on the edge there just to make sure or just to make it look like it's been sitting out for years and years and I'll even rub some on the sides here and when I do that you can see I dab it down on the paper towel and I'm just using my finger here and when I dab it on the sides I will just kind of rub it in almost I mean you barely can see this but it's just enough to make it look like it's like actually aged like this so I think it turns out really really good completely optional but I just really love how that ends up looking with that green touch on there now of course we just need some flowers I'm just digging into my stash for these I have just so many different florals sitting around. So whatever you would want to put in here, you could definitely change it out for the seasons. Remember that on the back side of this, I've got that Christmas one. I can flip it over for Christmas time and have a cute Christmas one. And I don't know, maybe I'll read you that in one of my videos closer to Christmas that I will um, update that side of it. Cause I feel like it did maybe need a little something extra, but look at how beautiful this turns out. I think this is amazing. I love the colors of it. I love the drooping flowers with that design on there. I just think it looks so vintage and farmhouse something that you would just definitely find in the French countryside do you guys like this piece in my stash I have several of these tags I feel like a lot of times they come from Christmas time I've noticed Dollar Tree starting to carry some blink ones for you to use this one I think came from Dollar General but I made a tag a couple of years ago on my channel with a beaded garland and it has honestly been one of the most popular DIYs on my channel so I thought I would kind of do a different take or an update on just a cute little tag to have for your decor whether you use it in tiered trays whether you just use it as an accent piece uh, but that's what I'm doing here now the paper didn't tear off the front of this as easily as some of the other ones I've had so I'm just using a little bit of water and I'm just kind of moving that around with my finger and my putty knife this is just getting all of that glue and residue off so I have a completely clean surface to work with and then I'm just gonna give this a basic uh, coat of white paint now as I was doing this I took some of this paper here and I started kind of distressing it with that to give some texture to it. I really like that kind of like almost like a wet um, distressing here. And then my putty knife as well. I kind of use that to kind of rough it up because I like that look. If you're if you're not a fan of that, then you'll just skip that step. Now in my stash, I have a lot of chalk couture things. Uh, there's some information down in my description box if you're curious about ch uh, chalk couture. But it's just kind of like screen printing or stenciling. So I'm just taking this as some script that I have here, and I love this I thought this would be really cute I love kind of that script in the background on some pieces and so um, you first put it on your little fuzzy mat there and it's gonna help it so it doesn't tear your paint up when you rip it off I'm sure we've all been there with like Cricut or something when you peel up that transfer paper and it tears half your paint up so it just kind of stops that from happening so once I decided the position I wanted this script to be, I wanted it kind of be a little bit at an angle. I thought that looked really cool. I'm just taking a light blue color here and I'm just scraping it on and then just kind of cleaning it up here with the chalk paste. And then you'll just peel that back to reveal your design. And I thought that looked so lovely. I really like how this turned out here. And then these also came in the same collection. Uh, you could do whatever you wanted. If you have um, don't have chalk couture pieces, uh, the transfer stuff from um, 
Dollar Tree would work really, really good. I know at um, the craft stores in the scrapbook section, you can buy kits that have all of the different like 3D embellishments and things. I mean, just use your creativity. This is just to give you inspiration here. I really loved the postage stamp on here and I loved that it said number 34 um, because I don't know how Cricut or not Cricut but Chalk Couture knew this but 34 is like my lucky number. <laughs> I don't know why but that's just been a number that's kind of stuck with me so I thought it was perfect to use on this so uh, you know if it has no significance to you that's great <laughs> but it did to me when I saw it I thought okay I'll try that. So I thought I would put a little ticking stripe on the bottom because it needed something a little extra and when I did that I felt like the top of it needed something too so I'm just using some Wasi tape from Dollar Tree and um, using that as my uh, barrier there so I could have these crisp lines and I just did the top in the gray. Now I have these beaded garlands here and I'm trying to decide to do the darker or the lighter. Now I chose to do the darker, so it's a matter of personal preference. I buy these at Hobby Lobby. They usually have them at fall and Christmas time and they're like meant for, you know, garlands or things like that, these beaded garlands here. And I buy them when they're 40% off, they end up being $6. It's the cheapest way to buy beads, plus they're already strung for you. So you can see I didn't have to string any of these. I just cut it off. I'll take the extra beads that I took off there so I could tie these off and I will put those uh, just in my bead jar so I'll have some extra if I need them. And then I'm just taking the end that was already tied for me there, it's a loop, and I just stick that through the tag there and pull the beads right through and that's what's going to fix this to my tag there. And then of course I thought it would be fun to do a tassel on the end. So I'm just taking a piece of wood and wrapping my twine around it. I do it about 20 times or so, it just depends on how thick you want your tassel. Also the piece of wood, the, the larger it is, the longer your tassel is going to be, so keep that in mind as well. And I just slide that off of the wood there and then I'm just deciding where I want to make the neck. I've learned that is there's the neck of the tassel and the top part is called like the head of the tassel. Uh, and so I stick just a little stencil brush through there to create where that neck and the head of the tassel are. And then I just wrap the twine around so that way I'm not going to, I can make sure I have a big enough loop in the head of the tassel there. And then you just cut the ends off there and I'm just tying this onto the end of the beaded garland and you just want to make sure to get the ends as even as possible. I'll straighten them out and trim them and then I'll put them in a different position, straighten them out and trim them so you can get as flat of edge on the uh, tassel pieces there. Uh, and then I like to put water on mine. My sprayer wasn't working so I just dumped the water on here uh, which worked fine as well and I just flatten it out, let it dry and then you can fluff it up. But I think this turns out so cute. This is going to be perfect, a little accent piece. I love having these as a piece of texture in my decor and hopefully you guys like this tag as much as you liked my other tag. I would love to know your thoughts on this down in the comments. I really loved the look of these cute bee canisters and I actually had a little canister that I thought would be perfect to try and create something very similar, kind of come up with my own dupe here. This is just a little tin from Hobby Lobby. I got it at one of their clearance sales last year, so I'm not sure. They usually have something like this. What it says on it, I don't know, but I think I only paid like 89 cents or something for them. And uh, it had a cute little coffee label on there, but I just used my little emery board and it filed right off. I mean, like I thought I was going to have to repaint this or do all sorts of things, but that just sanded off so easily. And I have these darling napkins. I got these at Home Goods this year, so they may still have them. And it had these darling vintage B designs on here. And I thought they were so cute. And I loved like the little feel to this kind of that French country almost feel um, with the little Paris thing there. I've used these in a lot of different DIYs. I love the decoupaging process. So I'm just using some water on a little brush to go around the outline of the part of the design I want. And then I'm just going to lightly tear that out so it gives it kind of a nice rough uh, a nice rough that's kind of an oxymoron huh a nice rough edge though like um, kind of not so crisp so it kind of goes on with a really good look here now when you do decoupage you want to make sure that you remove the back portion of the napkin because there'll be two ply napkins so you're just working with that thin front uh, portion of the napkin and then I'm just using some Mod Podge and I'm using the matte I've used matte I've used satin I've used gloss it just depends on the finish uh, it really isn't gonna matter too much though so I'm just doing a thin coat on the my canister where I want that design to be and I'll spread that out 
Now there's several different ways to Mod Podge. This is what I have had success with and so it's still wet and kind of tacky when I put this on and I lay my design down and I work from the center with my finger just lightly pressing that design down smoothing out any bubbles or any wrinkles. I've seen some people use like cling or plastic wrap to do this process. I still have yet to try that, but I can see the benefits it might have, but you just wanna be very delicate going around the designs here. And I just worked from the center out. And then once that dries, you put a layer of Mod Podge over the nap, the top of the napkin to make sure that it becomes waterproof and has the same finish. Now I start with the edges is how I start and work my way kind of going outwards you can see from the napkin there and I will just kind of go closer into the center and work my way out. I love how this turned out. I love the feel of it, that vintage look. I think this design is perfect. It's gonna look so cute. You guys wait until you see it on the tiered tray together with everything. You're gonna love this. I think it turned out beautiful. I love that Dollar Tree is now consistently carrying these round blank signs so you don't have to buy uh, the ones from like the seasonal section. You just have the blank wood to work with. It just makes life a lot easier when you're crafting. So I took the t um, twine off of this and I just gave it a good coat of white paint. So you'll just do whatever base color you want. And I am a big fan of like the ticking stripes. You guys know that I do that a lot. I love that in the farmhouse decor. Kind of adds kind of almost like a French uh, country vibe to it also. But I just thought I had I saw a sign similar to this on Pinterest and I thought you know what I really like that I think I can do that myself so I just had all these pieces on hand since I'm crafting from my stash for this DIY and so I thought it would be really fun this Wasi tape from Dollar Tree works really well to do your stenciling like this with um, you just want to make sure that you have it pressed down well enough to make sure that no uh, paint seeps underneath it now this paint is kind of close to the pool color uh, or Robins of uh, Waverly or like the Robins egg color uh, in Dixie Belle. I mixed it myself just with colors that I had. Um, and so, but any color that you want to use obviously is going to work for this, but I didn't have either of those colors on hand. So I tried my best to create them because I do love that kind of lighter bluish green tone. And uh, you can see that I painted that middle stripe and then I thought, well, I'm going to put another piece of tape on the edge here to create the little uh, stripes on the side of the ticking stripe. And you can see how well when I peel that Wasi tape back, like the only piece that I paint that got was my error because I went outside of the lines. <laughs> But you know, sometimes you need to color outside the lines in life, right? So now I am deciding to uh, distress this. And so I'm just taking an emery board. I love using an emery board in crafting because it gets into all those little areas. So whatever you have, a sanding block would probably work a little better to do this flat uh, area of a space here. And then once I got that distressed, I'm coming in to do some stenciling. And I just have one of the Dollar Tree stencil brushes that I trimmed off to be completely flat because I felt like I could stipple that a little bit better. Um, this, uh, what am I trying to say? Okay, sorry. The stencil itself came from Hobby Lobby uh, down their um, stencil aisle. And I just loved it. But I mean, of course, whatever stencil you have, or if you wanted to cut something out on your Cricut, I'm just showing some different methods of ways to get things without having to always use a cutting machine or something. Um, or But like the rub-on transfers would work great, printing on tissue paper. There's so many methods out there to do. So I'm using some chalk paste to do that because I didn't have any black paint and I did want to do this in black. Um, I'll, I'll kind of explain as I go here what happens. I don't, I make a kind of a boo-boo here in a minute or a bad choice, I guess we'll say, uh, but I kind of go with it. It does turn out pretty good in the end, but you're just using an up and down motion when you're um, stenciling and just making sure that you're getting the coverage. Now, this looks great. I should have just stopped here and left it, okay? And if I wanted to distress it, I should have done some white paint brushing over it. But for whatever reason, without thinking, I just decided to go over it with my emery board. And I don't know if it was because it was chalk paste or what, but the black just kept getting everywhere. And every time I would try and clean it up, like more black more black would just come. And I was like, this is garbage. Like I didn't, I mean, I literally didn't know what to do. I just kept trying to do my best to try and clean it up with the baby wipes. And you can see like the more I wipe, the more the black comes. And um, I am just using some white uh, paint here to kind of brighten it up a little bit. Cause eventually I just had to stop and be like, I just have to accept the way that it is. So if you do want to distress it, I would suggest since you've used black and again, I don't know if it was just the chalk 
paste that I used or if it would have done this with like acrylic paint or chalk paint uh, but just take a little bit of white paint on like a brush and just dry brush over the top of it to give it that worn look I think that would have achieved it much better but I mean it doesn't look awful I mean it, it actually looks pretty decent but just with the process of how it was happening I was a little disappointed that I'd made that decision so again learn from my mistakes or if you like the way it looks copy it exactly I guess so this is just some uh, fencing wire or baling wire that we use on our farm I stole it out of my husband's truck and I get asked all the time about these little trimmers here I got them at Lowe's it's the cobalt brand and they work wonderfully to cut flowers to cut wire um, they with the way that the handle is and where the tension is it, it it's like no pressure at all for you to cut through things super easily but I'm sure you can find them at any hardware store but I just get asked all the time about those so I just use my um, pliers there to kind of twist that bailing wire uh, on the front there to kind of create that sign and I do end up shortening this I don't show that on camera but I did shorten the handle on there but I all overall I think this looks really good it's got that really faded aged look even though I didn't love the process that it went through. I think all in all, I'm going to hang this on my pantry door in my kitchen because I love to do that. A layer, it may be on a wreath. I just think it turned out really cute and very rustic looking. What do you guys think of this one? This project is so fun and it really does scream springtime or just that fresh garden vibe. So you can use any kind of bucket or planter that you have. That was just one. It came from Ikea, but I did pick it up at a yard sale. And then this little bundle of, these are grapevine wreaths. And I honestly think they're supposed to be together like this. It was $3.99 from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to cut them apart and I'm just going to use one of them because I thought it looked a little too thick. And, and I don't really know that these were intended to be cut apart like this but there's no reason you couldn't do that so then you get two projects out of it and then I'm just taking some floral foam here and I'm just going to cut this I just use my putty knife to cut that fairly easily and I'm just shoving some craft paper down there so that will kind of help the um, foam stick up a little bit there so it'll be flush with the top of the pail and I just stick all that foam in so that way I have a good surface to work with now I'm taking some Spanish moss and I'm just going to glue around all of the edges here I just put a little hot glue down I grab that Spanish moss just in little clumps there and I just kind of put it around be careful when you're pushing that down because the glue does seep up through that and it you can really burn yourself which you know I may or may not be speaking from experience here but I'm just gluing all of this all the way around and you don't necessarily have to use Spanish moss if that's something that you it's too messy for you or you don't love it I mean you could use some reindeer moss if you wanted there's definitely different options that you have here now I do go around and just trim the edges here because I want kind of a cleaner look maybe not super clean but it was kind of getting a little squirrely and out there now I'm taking some of my fencing wire this is just wire that we had from our farm that we use when we uh, fix our fences and everything and I'm just cutting a little piece of it and making like a hook kind of like when you're putting flowers I don't know at the cemetery on Memorial Day and you take your wire hangers do you guys remember doing that <laughs> to help the flowers stay in the ground I just remember doing that a lot with my grandparents when I was younger so I'm just folding these little wires over making little hooks and that's going to stick down into that floral foam that we have there and and, or I guess it's just styrofoam, not floral foam. And it's just going to make that little wreath stand up there in your pail. Now I have this is from a project I did last year that I pulled out the greenery and then this is Dollar Tree greenery right here that I'm showing you. So this is just like a vine that I got from Dollar Tree. But when I stuck this one up that I had, I took it out of another project that I did. I really liked the way this one looked. So I'm just going to cut a couple of sprigs off of it. But really Walmart has like beautiful boxwood or eucalyptus that would work that you can get for like 97 cents a sprig. So you definitely, I mean, if you wanted to use flour, hours or something to do this you could but I'm just taking the two sprigs and I'm sticking it down in so one kind of goes off one direction and the other goes off the other so it's going to try to look like it's growing up around the wreath kind of like a vine so I just kind of will break not really break but kind of pull apart some of the grapevine and stick some of the little uh, greenery through it that's what's going to help it look like this greenery is growing around the wreath there now I happen to have this little nest in my stash here and this would be completely optional but I really did feel like this 
just drove home the springtime feel. I love how clean it looks like and looks without it as well. So I mean, it's something you could easily remove if you didn't want that there, but I'm just making a little hook there with the wire and just to kind of help get it into place there. And I'm going to show you guys what it looks like with it and without it. And you can tell me which one you like the best, but I really just think this is so beautiful. I've seen these uh, in the craft stores or in boutiques or anything like that. I've seen these go for like $30, $40, maybe even more than that. But I really just think that this looks so pretty and so natural that it would be beautiful in any space. What do you guys think of this one? It's been a little while since I've made a riser, so I'm kind of excited to show this to you guys. If you're new here, I love to make risers. I make them all year long, and they're so fun to use in your decor. I have so many different ideas. I'll link some videos down in my description box if you want to see those. But I love that Dollar Tree has these little containers, and they have these little scalloped edge on the, the lid. I've made some of the bigger ones, but this is the first time I've seen these little mini containers. So I'm just taking a candle holder. You can use one that you have at home. You could use a wood one. You could use uh, Hobby Lobby also sells candle holders like this. They're like a dollar more something than Dollar Tree when you get them on a discount. But I'm just going to paint both of these the same color so they match. So I'm just using some white chalk paint. And you guys look at these adorable little hands down here. This is my little boy that came down as I was making this and he wanted to help. And I thought, well, how can I say no to that? So his paintings, this just shows you don't have to be perfect with this. But I let him paint both sides of it. At first I thought, oh, I'll have him do the inside. And then I was like, well, he did a pretty good job. So I do end up letting him paint when I turn it over on the surface that will actually show. But of course on the bottom it's not going to show that much because you're going to glue it onto the candle holder. So I'm just showing you here he flipped it over and started doing that and I think he did such a great job and I just love that his cute little hands are are here forever in this cute little video making this riser and he'll remember making this so that is kind of fun. You get to watch us do a little tag team here. So he's drawing the one piece while I'm painting the riser and then we switch here in just a second. But it does take a few coats, maybe three coats of paint to get the coverage that you like, maybe even four depending on what kind of chalk paint you're using. So now I want this to really adhere. I don't want this to like fall apart or anything. I want it to be pretty sturdy. So I'm using some E6000 intermittently kind of around the edge of that candle holder. I'll even take a craft stick. I don't want this coming over the edge. I want it to look as clean as possible. So I'm kind of pushing it up and over onto the inside where that you won't see that portion um, because the container top is going to be glued to that and then I'm just kind of spreading it out just a little bit but I want to make sure I leave some of the area on the surface to put some hot glue because you're going to want that immediate hold now you don't have to do the hot glue if you don't want to. You don't have to have that immediate hold if you're going to let it dry overnight. If you're impatient like I am, hot glue is your best friend. So I'm just going in the little areas I left open because you don't want to glue the glue. You don't want those two glues to mix because you will not get the type of hold that you're looking for. Now on a piece like this, it probably wouldn't matter so much because it's not like this is going to hang on a wall or anything. But just keep that in mind when you're doing that. I see a lot of people like put the hot glue right on top of the E6000 and that compromises the bond that you're going to get. So just be careful with that. So I'm going around cleaning it up because I don't want any of that glue showing. So I'm just doing my best to clean that up with that stick and my fingernail. Now I love to distress things. You don't want to sand this because you're going to reveal the red that's underneath there. So I'm taking some mineral chalk paint, even like a cashew, an elephant color, some antiquing wax. I just kind of wanted to go really light on the distressing. But the reason I wanted to do it is because I feel like it really makes those scallops around that container lid really show up. You can see the detail in them. So it kind of gives them a little bit more definition. And if you look at pieces that you buy, like in the store and things like that, a lot of them have a little bit of distressing or some type of definition on the edges of pieces like that. So I really feel that's what's going to elevate your piece to the next level. I went even over the little ridges in the candlestick there. You can even go over the top of it with some more white paint if you feel like you get it a little heavy and lighten it up a bit. But here's the finished project and I think it is beautiful. This is going to be, I mean, of course you can use this all year round. It's not just Christmas, but these containers typically only come out at Christmas time. So that's why I'm putting it right here in this video. But I love this and I intend to use this all over and you get two lids so you technically can make two projects you just have to have another base for it what do you guys think of this one and are you fans of the risers because i have so many more new ideas to do with risers 
At the craft store, you can always find some cute little wood cutouts. These are some cute little birds that I happen to cut out myself. And I'm just going to show you the process of covering these up or painting them, covering them up, painting them because I feel like you can find a lot of different wood shapes in the different sections at the craft store. Now I have two sets of these, each set of three, I'm going to do a little bit different. They're going to look almost the same, but not quite. So I want you to pay attention and let me know which one you liked the best. So this first set here, I'm giving a very thorough coat of paint to, I give two or three actually to give a very good coverage. Now the second set here, I'm doing more of like a messy coat of paint. And so I'm just going kind of haphazardly all over the bird, not necessarily paying attention to getting every nook and cranny, just kind of like a pre-distressing, just giving it a very aged look from the get go with the paint here. Now, and I do this with all three birds in each set. So you can kind of see them taking shape here and tell the difference between each set. Now I have this cute stencil here. I thought this would be a really fun stencil to use on these. Granted, you're going to see that it's much bigger than my birds. And so I can kind of turn it around and do different parts of the stencil on each bird. And I am using one of my new most favorite colors of paint that I've ever used. And it is the vintage duck egg duck egg by Dixie Bell paint. I absolutely love this color and it turns out so beautiful on these birds. Now I just twisted each bird around on the stencil just to try and decide which part of the design I wanted on them. I wanted them to all look the same but yet different not be completely cookie cutter. And I just am using a stencil brush with that duck egg on there and just going in an up and down motion. I'll even swirl it in some areas. Just want to make sure that your stencil is down really good before you start swirling it because you don't want any bleed through but I really do love using stencils and I think they're so fun and I like the different looks that you can get I mean you can see those different birds up there how the pattern is different on each of them and the coverage that this Dixie Belle paint gives is phenomenal I'm this is the first time I've ever used their paint and I'm totally sold I can't wait to try other colors if you have any other colors to recommend definitely let me know down in the comments this by far is one of my most favorite colors of paint I think it's just the perfect like grayish bluish greenish I don't know how else to describe it other than that so after I got my stencil and the paint on I went ahead and sanded each of the edges now to me this gave it a much more high-end look something that was more custom uh, when you look at these items that you'll see in the different types of boutiques and stores you'll see that they do have the edges finished like that and I really just felt like it gave it a really crisp look. I also thought it would be fun to go over the actual stenciling there to give it a little bit more of a faded look so you can see how that looks there. And then I did the same thing on all of the birds and I even did the same thing on those birds I gave the messy coat to but they just kind of had a lighter look. You can definitely tell the difference between the two here. Do you guys have um, a set that you prefer? Uh, I definitely think the messy coat set was faster to make. So if you were going to sell these, then definitely if you like that one, that one was definitely the easiest, but they both have a good place. I think they both turned out really pretty. I picked up this darling little bird cage and pedestal and apparently some glass beads at a recent yard sale that I went to and I got a whole box of stuff for just a few dollars and I was so excited about this bird cage because I loved the look of it and the structure of it but I just did not the color was not doing it for me and that's what's so fun about thrifting is in yard sales is you get to find these structural pieces that you think oh if this was just a different color I would love this because things like that are so so easy to change. Now I'm taking a wax candle and I am just putting it in the areas. You can see on this piece there's some distressed areas already. That's how it naturally came from wherever this was originally purchased. And I don't want that green color to show but I really wanted to have some of that brown distressed areas pop through. So I'm just very heavily taking this wax candle and rubbing it on there because I wanted to make sure that that was the areas that when I distress this or I'll show you what I do here in just a minute that those are the areas that pop and that come out not the green. So I took this out to my studio and spray painted it. You guys have seen me spray paint a million times. So I didn't feel like I needed to bore you with that footage. But what I'm doing now, and I did just use a matte spray paint, but any kind would work. 
I'm taking my heat tool. I had a viewer tell me to try this with this wax method and I really did like it. It turns out really well. I just hold my heat gun until it heats that wax up underneath the paint and it starts to melt. And then you're able to wipe away the paint and then it will thus show that little distressed base there. The where the brown was not the green because I didn't put any of that wax where the green was because I didn't want that popping through there might be a little bit of this green that comes through on one or two of these little areas but you can't really tell and you can always go in and touch it up with some paint if you really don't like it but it was such a fun process to try I've recently tried this wax method on another piece that I did recently in a video and it worked so well so I was very happy for this tip of using my heat tool to heat that up and you can see I just hold it there to melt it just be careful not to burn yourself obviously um, and you can see I just hold it there and then it just wipes right off I mean it was so simple and easy and I really did like the contrast this birdcage ends up being so beautiful and I can think of so many different ways that I can use this in decor in my home so I'm quite excited about it. Now I just did the same thing on this top part of the birdcage. It's a little, it takes a little bit of time to do this but it ends up being so pretty and you can also if you're if you don't want to use the wax or use a heat tool you still can just rub it off or sand it off or even take like a putty knife and scrape it off. So if you don't want to have to use the heat tool that's totally optional. It did just make this process a lot easier here but I think this bird cage turns out so beautiful and it's one of those uh, pieces that's kind of a staple piece to have that is kind of timeless and I think that it will be beautiful in my decor do you guys like this one this project is a remake or a take on a table that I have made before. It is a tiered tray that is a potting, uh, inspired by a potting table. It is one of my most popular DIYs and I found these little pictures at Dollar Tree and I thought they would be perfect because I've been looking for something to kind of simplify the process to make this table. Now you could see the one was kind of falling apart there. I had to glue the sides together. These were the only two that I found in the Dollar Tree I was in that day. If you find these grab them because they are perfect for this project now I did remove the tin there the little uh, sign that said home I believe the other one here says friends it looks like and you can hang on to those use those for other projects if you want trash them whatever you want to do but it the glue did leave a little bit of residue behind so I'm just sanding these and this is just going to distress them and it really brightens them up and I love the finish that it gives Painting them would always be an option as well, but you can see how bright these look. I love kind of the almost natural wood color that this gives. It's gonna be perfect for our little potting table that we're gonna make here. Now I'm trying to keep this as much of Dollar Tree products as I can. I'm using some of the tumbling tower blocks. I want these to be the feet of my table, but I want them to be thicker than just one tumbling tower block. So I'm going to take some wood glue and hot glue and I'm going to make them thicker so that way I can have a thicker uh, base on there. You want to make sure to get these as even as possible so your table doesn't wobble at all. And I had started out using the clamps and realized I really didn't need to do that. I could just just uh, glue them with the wood glue and the hot glue and press them together really tightly with my fingers and that would give me the bond that I needed. I would just have to hold it for a few seconds. I get asked a lot about using hot glue and wood glue together and they're great to uh, use together. It does not compromise either of the glue uh, the way that it adheres. The hot glue actually works as a like temporary clamp while that wood glue dries. So it's totally fine to use those two together. Now I want to have these have a very rustic finish. I want the two layers of my table to have that natural wood color and I want my legs to contrast with a white color and I will distress them with some antiquing wax as well. Again, you could paint this or this in any colors that you wanted. Now where these are picture frames, you can see that I'm just removing that little sawtooth hanger on the back there. I just used some pliers rather than unscrewing it and it worked great to get that off. And then you can see I'm just going in just very lightly dry brushing. So dry brushing is just getting your brush, putting a little bit of your paint or your wax on it. In this case, I'm using antiquing wax and I wipe most of it off. So it's just very, very light as you brush it up and down. It's just going to give that little aged look. Or this is going for a potting shed type of vibe here for this table. Obviously, I want to look like it has been used. It's rustic. And so that's why I'm going heavy with my distressing on this. That's again, just totally opposite just giving you some ideas of what you might like to do for your decor but I feel like that very rustic look there really does add that farmhouse touch to it 
Now I'm just using some hot glue to glue my Jenga blocks here at the Tumbling Tower blocks as my feet to the table. Don't worry, I will, I will come back in and remove that little barcode sticker off of there. At one point I realized that, I don't know, I, for some reason when you get in the zone and crafting, like you don't even realize things like that until, you know, minutes later you're going, oh, I can't believe I didn't do that. So now I'm just showing you that I cut some square dowels down and you guys, I found some easels at Dollar Tree uh, that would work perfect to use the legs off of that if you wanna keep this all Dollar Tree. I cut mine to about five and a half inches, rounded up to six inches, that would be fine. I was just trying to work with the length of the wood that I had. You could even go five inches. It just depends on how far apart you want your two levels, but I was just showing you that I did the five and a half inches now I'm painting these to match those tumbling tower blocks so I'll give each of these a coat of white paint it takes about two coats and then I will go back in with the antiquing wax here as you can see and I'm just distressing I pay close attention to the edges of the dowels there uh, because uh, that's where you see that heavy antiquing wax come off of there off of the brush onto the leg and it really just makes it look dirty, <laughs> which is what we're going for, right? It's a potting table, so we're gonna go with it. And it just is that farmhouse look, and I really do love that chippy farmhouse style. These heat guns are absolutely fantastic to use with your putty knife to get those stickers off. You can see how easily those just pop right off of there. You just heat up that adhesive underneath those stickers. I just put my little putty knife there that I got from Dollar Tree and it just comes right up. I did get this heat gun on Amazon. I'll link it below if you're interested in investing in one. I honestly didn't know how often I would use it because I always just used my hair dryer when I did crafting but you guys I use this in almost every single DIY so if you're looking for something new to add to your crafting game I would highly recommend one of those heat guns. So now I'm doing the same process with these square dowels as I did with our feet for the table and I'm just using some hot glue. I just put a bunch of hot glue in the corners there and then I placed those legs in and that way I would get um, the bond that I needed to. Now to have this glue to the top of our bottom layer, which you'll see what I mean here, I am using a little bit of wood glue with the hot glue to do this. The other table that I made, I did with hot glue, it has held up just great. So, I mean, this isn't gonna get super heavy use. So I feel like the legs using just hot glue would be fine, but gluing it to that surface, this top layer to the second layer, I wanted a little bit more of a bond with that wood glue. So that's why I used a little bit of wood glue there. And you guys, look at how beautiful this table is. This is such a fun table. It's perfect. It's such a great um, and different take on a tiered tray. I get so many compliments on this table that I have. Like I said, this is a little bit of a smaller version of one that I made previous on my channel, but I get so many comments on this and everybody just seems to love it because it's different than what you see everywhere. And I really think that it turned out beautiful and you can use it all year long with all different seasons. I have these cute little seed pots. They're kind of what you use like when you're starting seeds in your house before you take them outside to plant. So perfect for springtime if you see these anywhere like where you find your seeds or anything like that at the your seed stores or wherever greenhouses pick some up because they're kind of fun to do some crafts with so they have this beautiful texture to them and so i'm you know like a real natural feel so i'm just taking a chip brush with some white paint and i go over each of them to kind of bring out that texture so you can really see it there and then i'm just going to take some styrofoam and i'm just going to use my putty knife here to cut that i find that is the easiest to cut it and i'm just cutting three little areas there to stick down in each of the pots i do kind of roll it on my table to give it a little rounded shape you can see in there so it fits in really nice. Now I'm going to take some cardboard. This is just off of, you know, an Amazon box here. And I'm just going to trace uh, each of these. Well, just three, not each of them, but I'm tracing three. So that way I can cut three circles out. And I will uh, use a screwdriver to kind of poke a hole in the middle of each of these. And what I'm doing here is I want a flat surface to be flush with the top of the pot. So, and you'll see why here, cause we're gonna put some stuff on it. And so I just kind of, the nice thing with these pots is since it's kind of that natural, 
material like you can kind of manipulate it to fit those in now i'm just taking some white flowers that i have this is something that was in my stash and i really i want to say I either got it at hobby lobby or walmart but i mean definitely dollar tree has it beautiful florals if you are anything like a crafter like myself, you probably have a good stash of florals already that you can pull from, but anything's going to look really cute doing this. And you can even change it up for different seasons if you wanted to. It would be really easy to pull out those flowers and stick something else in to change them. So now what I'm doing with that cardboard space is I'm just using some hot glue and I in some reindeer moss and I just picked this reindeer moss up at Dollar Tree and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue and then push down that reindeer moss all the way around each of these where that cardboard area that we cut out is and I use a barbecue skewer to help me so that way I don't burn my fingers and I can also get it pushed down in any like nooks and crannies if you will that it needs to be done so you can kind of see here I'll place down that little bit of reindeer moss and then just push it down with that barbecue skewer. I love how these turn out. I love the natural feel and the natural vibe that they're giving here. They're going to be beautiful in my home and definitely bring that touch of spring. Is this something that you guys would try or do you like this? Let me know down in the comments. I like to keep glass jars and vases in my stash. They're really easy to find at the thrift store or you can pick them up at your craft store. I like to grab them when they go on sale for really cheap because I feel like you can always find uses for them. Now I just used my heat tool to get off the sticker. There was a little bit of residue. So I'm just using some water and just moving that around with my finger to make sure that gets all broken up and then just wipe it clear with a paper towel. And you can see there's no residue left at all. Now I have this rope in my stash. This just came from Dollar Tree. I think if you had like some nautical rope to use with it as well, anything like that would work. Even twine would work and get the job done. But I'm just going to use this and I put a little bit of hot glue on the ends and I just twisted it there when the glue wasn't so hot so that way I wasn't going to have a problem with any fraying on the rope. Now I'm just picking a starting point here. I'm using some hot glue to adhere that to the glass jar. And I'm just gonna be going around in a circular motion with my piece of rope, just making sure that every like inch or so I put a little dot of hot glue. And you just repeat this process all the way around. It's super simple. You do wanna make sure that you're not using so much hot glue that you have a problem with it spilling out or seeping out of the rope or anything, cause you wanna keep it as clean as possible. If you had like one of those small nosed glue guns, uh, that would be a perfect thing to use on this project here. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, I just, I have my trusty old glue gun I've had forever and I love it and it works. So if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? <laughs> so I'm just, as you see here, going around here, just being very careful. I do put the glue on the rope, a little dot, not on the glass. I just wanted to keep it, like I said, as clean as possible. And it's just so simple to do this. This project took maybe 10 or 15 minutes to do from start to finish. If you have one long piece of rope to use, I would suggest doing that so you don't have to go back in with another piece. I just was using a scrap piece and I didn't know exactly how far that would get me. So that's what I started with. And you can see I even ended up bringing out another bundle there because I wasn't sure how far up I wanted to go on the vase. It's just a matter of personal preference when you're doing something like this, what you think looks good. And you can see here, I am just putting those two ends together to try to make it as seamless as possible. Obviously, when I display this, that area is going to go in my back. I did where I started the rope at the very bottom and I ended this layer. I wanted to make sure that those seams were both on the same side. So they, that way, if I did put this towards like a wall, you would not be able to see that at all. Honestly, it's very seamless though. And so I feel like unless you look really closely, you can't tell. But the same process here, just going around a little bit of glue and then I will go place that rope down. You can see here, I'm putting a little bit more there. And I just come in and I just tap that rope down and I, I move that rope towards the glass. So any hot glue will go towards the glass, not out between your seams. And then any excess there, I was just kind of picking off. So as you guys can see, this is easy peasy, really simple. Here's just a close up look at exactly what that looks like. I don't do an actual like a string or bead of glue. It's just little teeny dots that I will do. And then I will push that rope in towards my vase. 
after I get the desired amount of layers there that I want, I'm just putting a little bit of hot glue on the end there to seal that so I don't have fraying. I do taper it off at a little bit of an angle. I have measured this so where this seam stops here, it's in line with all of the other areas that I have started new rope lines. So that way, again, they're all on that same side. So when it's placed against a wall, you would not even be able to see those. Again, you have to look pretty close to be able to see it there. And just using some glue, I'm just going to hold that down until it completely dries and there we have it I decide to take a little bit of one of these aim of flames and go over to kind of get any of those little hairs or anything like that that comes up from the rope I really like the finish this gives the rope of course just be careful do this outside have water close by just be very smart when you're using an open flame like this this is completely optional but look at how beautiful this is I think it turns out so elegant so neutral and simple I think it is the perfect beachy item you could even put like a little seashell on the front if you wanted to completely go that nautical look or just leave it more plain and that way it matches all decor types. What do you guys think of this? Do you like how it turned out? I was at my mother-in-law's the other day and she had a pile of stuff bound for the thrift store and this bucket was in there and so I'm going to call this a thrift flip because it was on its way to the thrift store and I rescued it. <laughs> so a thrift rescue. Anyhow, it's this darling metal bucket and the sign on it was really cute. I'm just checking to see if that handle comes off easily at all, which it did not. And you can see the design is very faded. The colors were probably once really bright and as I was looking at it, I realized, wait a second, this is just paper that's on here. So I did my best. To tear as much paper off as I could. I kind of used my putty knife to go around. There was like a little ridge around the base and the uh, top of the bucket. You can kind of see those there. And I just kind of went with my putty knife to kind of perforate the paper there so I could tear it off as easily as I could which honestly was not very easy. Uh, it was kind of hard to get off. So I just kind of had this idea, I'm gonna get as much off as I can or perforate it as much. And then all I did is I went and I ended up soaking this in a sink full of water, like my kitchen sink for probably about an hour. And as I, this is uh, after that, and so I'm just gonna show you that it starts to come off pretty easily as I rub it with my finger. So I just take the putty knife again and I'm just gonna peel up as much as I can. And it does a pretty decent job this time of getting uh, uh, being able to scrape it off but there was still a little bit you'll even see some areas like you can tell that didn't even the water didn't even touch it because the paper was uh, so adhered and it could, water couldn't touch it. And so I had to end up soaking it again. Some of it just peeled off so easy that top layer did, but you can kind of see in the center there, that's where that little dry spot was. So I took my sander, sanded it a little bit to kind of help break up any more of the paper that was on there. And then I took it back to my kitchen sink and let it soak maybe for 10 or 15 minutes. All I did there, which I'm sorry I don't have footage from in my kitchen, uh, was I just took a sponge and on the scrubby side of the sponge, just kind of went around all of these areas that you can see here. I actually was thinking this looks kind of cute, like the, the way it was there, but I just kind of scrubbed all of that off with that side of the sponge and it came right off. And there was a few little areas when I got it back down into my craft studio. So I just used a baby wipe to wipe those off. Now, this is my first time ever using Dixie Bell paint. I found a cute little um, antique store in my uh, neck of the woods that had a booth that had a bunch of different Dixie Bell paints and I have seen a lot of different crafters use it and I had never tried it so I found this duck egg color which I absolutely love and so I thought it, this would be the perfect project to try this on. I'm kind of going for a vibe of like a French uh, flower tin here. And so you'll kind of, hopefully I achieve that or you think that I do. I love how it turns out. So I'm just very careful to go around the, the hardware on where the handle is because I do like that color, kind of the rusty metal color there showing through. So I'm just very careful as I go around the edge of that. And I'm just using my heat tool between layers because you can see how fast it dries when you're using your heat tool. So you can move right on. And honestly, it didn't like crack or anything like that. This paint is very well I definitely can see why a lot of crafters gravitate to this paint and I can also see why it is a little bit more expensive than your typical chalk paint uh, I was very pleased with it and I'm excited to try some different colors and maybe even some furniture projects with this if you guys would like to see some furniture flips or furniture makeovers let me know down in the comments because I love doing furniture pieces and I haven't done a lot of them on my channel because I normally do a little bit smaller craft items but if you guys would be interested in that definitely let me know down in the comments because I would love to start showing you guys some of those. Now it took a couple of coats of paint to get the color that I wanted on there, the coverage I wanted. 
And I apologize that I realized I had not filmed me doing this whole stencil process, but I'm just using this little stencil foam thing from Dollar Tree. And I'm just using some black chalk paint and pouncing up and down. I kind of swirl it a little bit to get into those letters. This stencil just came from Dollar Tree. You could use, make your own stencil, use whatever. But I thought it would be so cute to put fleurs on there. I hope I said that correctly. I do not speak French, uh, but that is French for flowers. I do know that. Uh, but I just thought that would be so cute especially since I was going for the French vibe with it and I end up putting some darling hydrangeas in it and I just think it looks so cute but I kind of take a little brush here um oh oh first you guys do you remember that sign I made a couple of weeks ago with the black paint on there and I made the mistake of sanding it and it made the whole project turn black I almost did the same thing with this one and was like I caught myself and went oh no 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 when you're doing black don't sand over it to distress it because it will turn everything black you're going to distress it with the same color of your base paint and you'll see me do that in a minute but I just take a little detail brush and I kind of close in from that stencil there I didn't really know how it was going to look I don't know if it would make a difference but I did it anyway so that way you can kind of see that F and that E there I just kind of made it look so it wasn't so um, apparent that it was a stencil anyhow then I just take a dry uh, do a dry brush technique and I just take a stencil brush or a chip brush apparently I'm gonna dry that off first there here we go and I put a little bit of that duck egg on it and then dab it off on like a paper towel or a baby wipe and then lightly go over because I wanted this to look faded and aged and so I didn't want that black to be and you can kind of see here after I go a couple of times it starts to have that more faded look I probably could have started with like a dark gray like an elephant color chalk paint or something like that might have even helped the process a little bit faster but I kind of kept going until I got the desired effect now I took some apple barrel uh, burnt umber paint uh, which gives a great rust color if you're kind of wanting to do a quick rust look now I've done lots of different rust techniques you there's the cinnamon technique there's the technique where you use baking soda uh, different times that I've used like different colors of paints to get more of a authentic um, rust color look this one I was just kind of going for let's just make this quick and easy and that burnt umber totally achieved what I wanted it to so I'm just kind of dabbing it in natural places where the bucket would have aged as it was sitting out in the weather you know I like to make up backstories for my pieces as I'm making them that this is just a forgotten bucket here that maybe has been repurposed for a flower bucket there the French countryside all of those thoughts go through my head as I'm making my projects so I'm just taking uh, along the edges on the bottom and then around the hardware from that handle and I love the wood handle that was on here so I feel like it really just kind of fits in and I didn't have to do anything to the inside of this bucket it actually looked really good the way that it was now less is more when it comes to the rusting so you can see here how everything looks together those white hydrangeas I feel like set this off uh, you could even drill a couple holes in the bottom and plant a real hydrangea in there if you wanted to do that this way I can use this inside or out but I think this will look darling on my porch this summer they have these darling little plaques or little sign blanks at Dollar Tree and then this is from Hobby Lobby in the wedding section however Dollar Tree sells little frames so feel free to use whatever little vintage frame that you would like to or vintage looking frame now I'm just removing the sticker from the back of this sign and I'm just sanding it down and while I'm doing that I figure I will sand the front of it mostly because when you pick up things from Dollar Tree there can be scratches on them or they can look pretty um, ununiform with how distressed they are so I wanted to just kind of get out any blemishes I wanted any distressing to be intentional and be what I put there so I'm just going to go over all of this the ridges everything and just kind of brighten this up and give it a really good uniform look on this little frame here I'm just going to remove the back completely because I'm not going to need it I'm going to be gluing it on to this other sign blank that we have and I'll just remove the pieces inside of it there because I don't need those it's just like a little plastic film on the inside of it not glass or anything and then I'm just going to lightly brush over this with some white chalk paint here to kind of brighten it up so it has a good contrast to the uh, back piece that I'm using that wood piece and I thought the white would be a really good contrast depending on what color your background is you could easily do like a vintage metal look to this would be really cute but I'm just going over all of the sides I have just a little little bit of paint on my brush here and just going all of, over all of those um, edges and details it really picks that up and I think it really gives it a nice look 
Now I'll just give you a little peek at my creative process here. A lot of times when I'm wanting to use some scrapbook paper or something, I will try a few things, kind of set it up, see how it looks, see what I like. That galvanized metal paper I love, but it did not really pop well with the frame. And I do like the look of this leather paper and I felt like the darker one was the best option. So that's what I end up going with. And then I just have some rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. This is one they've had for a little while and I've just kind of cut some of the little pieces out of this to put on here and I just kind of haphazardly just make a collage of some of these vintage looking things. Now you could easily put an actual photo in here, a vintage photo of a family member it would be absolutely beautiful a drawing anything I mean the possibilities are endless here this is just something that I did to kind of go for this vintage farmhouse look and I'm just using some hot glue around the back of the sign here and I will just place this paper on here you can see I place it down and then place the frame so I can center it how I want it centered there and see what I'm doing now I have this little key from Dollar Tree here and at first I thought I was maybe going to put it on there and then I thought no it actually looks cuter off to the side so I this is where I'm going to end up gluing it is right there and I thought that that looked really cute just another little element there kind of adds that vintage tone so I just use a little bit of hot glue and I just put that on the back of the key and then I just place that back down kind of how I want it make sure it gets a good firm hold there and I just thought that was a really cute contrast to bring that wood tones to the front of the piece where it matches the tones on the back as well. Now I'm just using a tumbling tower block to glue onto the back of my little frame here. Um, if you want to put a little bit of cardboard or poster board or something on the back, cardstock even, to give that a little bit more um, heftiness rather than just the paper there. My cardstock paper was pretty or my scrapbook paper was pretty decent so I felt that it held okay but just know that you're feel welcome to put a little cardboard there if you want to kind of beef that up a little bit. And then I'm just spinning this around to kind of get it as straight as I can while that glue is still hot so I can manipulate the position of it there. Now the frame itself looks absolutely darling on that back, but I thought it would be really fun to add a little bit of greenery. This is just the boxwood that comes from Walmart. I pulled off, I think I end up using six pieces in total. I have four here, but then quickly decided I needed a little bit more. And I'm just putting a little bit of glue on that. And if you guys have watched my channel, you know I love to make 3D signs like this. And this one's a little different because I don't go around the entire edge of the frame. I'm just doing it on the diagonal. But I love popping out that frame or your centerpiece and giving a little bit of a little bit of space and then tucking some greenery in behind it. I think it really adds a, such a darling element. It gives it some texture I just it's something unique and different that you don't see all of the time but I really do think it looks really nice so you can see here I'm just kind of struggling for a minute there to get this little piece in here but I just glue all of those in behind and then hold them and I do the same thing on the bottom to match it so they match on the diagonal if you have a problem with any little hot glue like webbies or wispies or anything I just use my heat gun to blast those be very careful with your box with that you don't melt it but this gets rid of any of those little stringy hot glue things that we all absolutely hate as crafters this is a great way to kind of get them just to kind of melt away into thin air but look at how beautiful this little sign looks this is a I just think this is adorable and I feel like if you really did have like a vintage photo in here of somebody in your family or something how beautiful would that be how fun would it be to have a, a vintage picture in here of um, like your great grandma and give it to your mom or your grandma or something as a cherished keepsake. I think this turns out beautiful regardless of the picture that you put in the center there. I think that this is such a lovely way to display a cute little frame and I think it has that really rustic and farmhouse touch. What do you guys think of this one? Are you a fan of this one? I am so excited to show you this project. I absolutely love the final result. Now, a few weeks back, I showed you the My Dollar Tree haul and I got this cute little picket fence sign from Dollar Tree. So, and I had so many of you be like, oh, I've had those, I've seen those, or I'm excited to see what you do. So I hope that this is something that you maybe haven't seen before and it turns out super cute. So hopefully you can give this a try. Now on this particular sign, these things come off so easy. Both signs that I have tried to remove things from, they pop right off, they don't ruin the sign so hopefully that's how everybody finds their sign so I just get everything removed from the sign and then I just cover it in white chalk paint you could do whatever color that you would like and then I'm going to go put uh, with a sharpie marker just put the slats back on this uh, fence by just using a ruler and drawing some straight lines there and then I'm going to go over them with some white paint to dull them down a little bit because I don't want the huge contrast of the black with the um, I want it to look aged and kind of more natural if that makes 
sense. Hopefully it is. I know I say if that makes sense a lot, but I guess in my mind, I just want to make sure that I'm saying it so you can understand it. So I apologize for that. Anyway, now I'm just taking some antiquing wax on a chip brush and I wiped a little bit of it off on my baby wipe there. And then I'm just slowly going back and forth here on each of the slats to kind of give it a wood feel. And, um, and then I'll kind of go back and you want to make sure not to go over an area that you've already done because that will smear the wax and it won't give you the really uh, stre good streak lines there. Now these boxes I'm sure you've seen at Dollar Tree. I'm removing the centers out of them and we're just going to use the bases of these little drawers. So I'm just using some wood glue and some hot glue to get these glued together. And I had somebody ask me if that wouldn't compromise the wood glue by using hot glue and it does not at all. It's actually pretty common practice uh, if you don't have like clamps that size or something or in a pinch to use hot glue to clamp them close that instant hold uh, to keep the wood glue there and in place. Now I do have clamps, so I am just going to clamp this together and I wasn't intending on doing this, but I really don't want there to be a space between those little boxes. I want them to look as cohesive as possible. Now I'm taking some craft sticks. You could do painter sticks. You could do the pops craft popsicle sticks, whatever. These are just some sticks that I got on Amazon. I'll see if I can link them below for you. And they don't have like the curved edge, like the painter stick. That's why I like them. And I thought it would really elevate this to have a look like a little planter box if I put this edge on it. So I just cut it to size just by eyeballing you know kind of where I measured it cutting it with my scissors and then I'm just using the wood glue and the hot glue you do want to make sure you can see there that I don't put the hot glue over the wood glue you don't want those two to mix you want the hot the wood glue to actually only be touching the wood and then I just cover this in white paint uh, I went back and forth if I wanted to do like a just stain it brown which would be really cute too but I am really happy with how it looks all together at the end I like the really light uh, color to it. So then this is just one of these cute little signs that they do at Dollar Tree all year long. This is one of like the hollow ones if if you can see what I'm talking about here um, that's not like the solid wood and that's what we want. And so I just removed that little hanger because I want this to be like a little tray shelf on here. So I'm just going to measure this. You can see it's way too big for how it is so I need to cut it down. So I'm just kind of measuring it there and seeing exactly how I want it. And you can kind of see if you could the cameras are really hard to pick up that I drew a little line right there where I'm going to cut this. Now I pull out my miter box and I cut this down with my miter box. So you can do that however you would like. You could also build like with just using some paint sticks, your own um, little tray to go there. I just thought it would be, I was gonna try to use the sign and it actually works out really well. Now I need this to be closed on the end. So the piece that I cut off, I am just going to tear that little end piece off. It snaps right off and just using some super glue of some sort, I'm just going to glue that back onto the end so it makes a shorter sign. Now, by all means, if you can find a shorter sign at Dollar Tree that works, it's already this size, definitely use that. So this paper just peels off of here. And then if you spray it with some water and let it sit for a couple of minutes, you can scrape all of that glue and all of the residue and the excess paper off. So I just get that all clear. Um, you don't really wanna paint over it because it will start to peel up the paper. It'll, it'll absorb the paint and it won't look very nice. So I do recommend taking all of that paper off. Now I paint that other tray white and then I go back in and distress everything because you guys know that I love to distress things. So completely optional here, how you decide to do this. I didn't sand any of it. I I only used uh, just antiquing wax on my chip brush. And I just went over all of the edges and I thought that little lip going around the edge there gave it a really good dimension. It added a lot with the, uh, to add a little more distressing to it. And now I'm gonna glue this onto our little fence here using just some super glue. So I don't use any hot glue because I didn't want it to push out at all. I wanted it to be as flush as it could. And sometimes with hot glue, it will dry a little bit before you push it and it will not let it sit flush to the thing. So that's why I did that. And I didn't have any clamps that would really clamp that really good. So now I'm just distressing this other little tray here, just the same way, just antiquing wax on a little chip brush and going around getting the coverage that I want. And then on the back side of it, I also use some super glue and then place that and I could kind of get the corners but there was a little bowing in the middle so I just held it with my fingers for about 60 seconds for it to dry you guys look at how cute this little fence like potting bench I don't even know what you want to call it but I think it's so cute so now I'm just going to uh, accessorize it and you guys this is something that you can use all year long and accessorize with all sorts of different seasons uh, I'm just putting a little beaded garland kind of fits right over those little pegs on that the pickets on that little fence there 
dryer and the little tray lets you just stick some things in kind of think of like an alternative you guys know I love to do like different types of tiered trays and I feel like this really kind of fits that bill and you can just see that things just sit right in there so here's a little bonus DIY uh, I wanted something else on my shelf there but I couldn't find anything in my stash that really works so I'm just taking this is a wooden nameplate card for like a table setting and on one side it's a chalkboard it's just the plain wood on the other side and it came from Hobby Lobby in a pack of like 10 it was like two or three dollars so keep an eye open for those because I love this shape and this is just a Dollar Tree rub-on transfer that I am using I thought this was so cute if you guys follow me on Instagram and you see this transfer at your Dollar Tree message me and let me know I would love to find some more of them now as I'm peeling this back if there's an area that the design is not fully transferred I just lay it back down and then I just go over it with my little craft stick there to make sure that it's fully transferred where the antiquing wax does make it take a little bit of extra time because that wax it doesn't want to stick to the best you guys this is one of those items that I kind of visualized it I had the little idea and as I was putting it together I'm like this could be a total fail but oh my gosh like I am so excited with the outcome of this I think it's absolutely beautiful it's going to be so fun to decorate for all different seasons it's a piece that can stay out all year long in my home and it was constructed with all Dollar Tree items like that just blows me away is this something that you guys would make if you did would you leave it up year-round I would love to know your thoughts on this piece I picked this basket up when I very first started my channel a few years ago and it's been sitting waiting for the perfect project and I felt like it was time to redo this. So I'm just wiping it off really good and I'm also gonna sand the edges because they were a little rough and that way it's not gonna be super rough. It'll be a little smooth. I just didn't wanna get any slivers or anything to be totally honest with you. I This basket is beautiful, but the color is just not something that I have in my decor, that kind of almost like orangey look tone to it. So I thought I would totally paint this. Now, spray paint might have been a better way to go. I'm not 100% sure. I just kind of started painting it with my chalk paint and I used this a chip brush to do it which a chip brush just has those natural bristles in it there so you may get a bristle or two to come out but it's very good for distressing and adding texture which is definitely what I wanted so I paint the entire thing white it did take a couple of coats it did take a little bit of time and I'm just going to take some painters tape here because I really wanted to add a stripe to it you guys know I love to add stripes to things and so I thought this basket would be the perfect thing to do that with so I just taped off a little area I was just kind of eyeballing what would probably look the best and I'm taking my vintage duck egg from Dixie Belle but of course when you're doing your projects you're going to be matching your decor so definitely pick a color that would be I mean even just a plain gray I think would be really pretty and really basic if you wanted to or even like a cashew type color would be really pretty so just a little color but not a lot something to add a little variation but it's very easy on the basket here to kind of go over the areas with that tape there the tape does a really good job as far as being a barrier and I feel like where you have the weave of a basket you've got a little bit of a buffer there in case you did go outside of the lines a little bit that you can see it turns out pretty cute and on the top I couldn't come up with a good way to space my stripes and so in the end this is kind of what I came up with and it did end up looking really good you'll see here but I mean it's not the most even of stripes but I distress it so it looks okay no <laughs> I do to go in and distress it though because I really did want to have that really aged look to this that little bit of like this piece came um, from being around a really long time has lots of stories to tell and so I'm just going over with my fingernail file to really get that rustic look to this. And I even go over the basket part here and you can see where all those, the weave of the basket is. It really does pick up that sanding and adds that really good texture for that um, distressed look. And I take, take my time and go through all the pieces. And on the white pieces, I will even sand those down to reveal some of the original color. And then I just take a baby wipe and wipe the entire thing down because you get a lot of dust and everything. And I even did the handles. You can kind of see I distressed around the edges of the handles. This piece distressed up so nicely. But I think it turns out so beautiful. I feel like this has such a good French country vibe to me. 
I love it. It looks like it could just be maybe even like an old sewing basket that like your great great grandma maybe had or just some piece. I don't know. I think this turned out so beautiful and I'm excited to use it in my home and I will definitely use this one much more than I will the original color that I came. For this project, you just need a blank picture like this. Now this originally had some writing on it. It was from uh, Hobby Lobby, I believe I bought it at the clearance. I had painted over it for another project, but I'd never used it, so it's perfect for this. And I have these two little different grapevine reefs, these two different sizes. And I've seen these at a couple of like the craft shows that I've been to recently and even some boutiques. So I thought it would be fun to make my own little snowman. And I'm just using some scrap wood for the snowman's hat. I'm just going to paint these with some black paint. Now this little brim is just a piece of a painter's stick. And then it's just a little piece of scrap wood from like one of those Dollar Tree planks that you get that come like five in a package. Now to embellish my little snowman here, I want some cute little bells. These are just some rusted bells. You can take some regular bells that you may have, spray them with some adhesive or put Mod Podge on them and put some cinnamon on them to rust them up. Soak them in some vinegar to do a rust technique that way. I actually bought a container at the craft store of just rusted bells because I use them a lot in my Christmas DIYs. So I thought it would be fun to have some just on hand. I just took two of them and I just tied them together so that way they could dangle from what's going to be like the belly of our snowman here. And I'm just using some hot glue on the back of this wreath. I wanted to attach the bells before I put the wreath onto my background because I just wanted to make sure that they were attached really well and the twine that I was using, like the knot was hidden behind it. So that way when I glue it on, you don't see that at all. Using quite a bit of hot glue, I go around my wreath here two or three times to make sure that I have a sufficient amount of glue that's going to touch the surface. You want to pay attention when you're using the grapevine because sometimes the glue will seep down into all the crevices there and you won't have a lot that touches your surface. So just make sure when you're working with something that has a lot of gaps and crevices, such as a grapevine wreath like this, that you make sure you have enough glue that adheres the surface and what you're gluing down. So just kind of eyeballing the spacing here to make sure I have enough room for his hat. I place that on so I can kind of see what I'm doing and then I glue on the head. Now to pop up the hat, I didn't show this and I apologize for that, but I did put a little square block behind it to raise that up. And you'll be able to see it a little bit as I go on through the video how it looks, but I just thought that the dimension on the hat looked really cute. That way it wasn't so flat. It kind of comes out over his head. You can see the gap there. I really loved the look of the dimension of that. So it worked really well to have that pop out. Now, instead of a scarf on my snowman, I thought it would be fun to do kind of some florals, some pine boughs here make it look really festive almost like a great big bow tie i guess of all of these different christmas foliages here these are just scrap pieces that i had so just take a look at what you have in your christmas uh, florals maybe you've got something that would already work really simple for this and i just did the same thing on either side so it was really symmetrical and just kind of went for things with different textures, different tones, different colors. You could be as colorful as you wanted this or have it be as neutral as you wanted with this. Now, a lot of the greenery that I was working with was a plasticky consistency. So I did switch from hot glue over to Beacon's glue. So I wasn't melting any of the florals that I was using. So just keep that in mind that Beacon's glue is amazing. Now I did just tie a little bit of gingham ribbon here into a shoestring bow and I'm just gluing that down with some hot glue. I'm leaving the tails a little bit longer so I can kind of maybe have them ripple down over the wreath here and I do dovetail the ends. You just fold it in half and cut up into a V motion or V um, shape there so that way you can see you have that really pretty dovetail end to your bows. Just using a dot or two of that Beacon's glue, I am just placing it on the grapevine wreath and the ribbon and pressing the ribbon down so it has a rippling effect. So it looks like it is just free falling 
over the snowman's belly, but that way we have control of where it is. So you can still see those bells tight in the middle. It's not going to fall down. And I do the same thing on the other side, just making sure to have a couple of little bends in the ribbon. So that way you have the natural looking ripples. Now I have this little tag. It's just from a set of Walmart tag ornaments and it just says joy on it. I loved the colors and I thought it was just a cute little embellishment. Like he's just holding on to a cute little tag to give someone there. Now I want to decorate his hat. So I have this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree that has a uh, print on it. And I thought it would be really cute to kind of cut this down to size so that way it matches the size of his hat. It's not going to be too overwhelming. And I am just, since the hat is popped out, I can just fold each of those sides around and glue it onto the back. And then just leave a little bit of enough space so you can tuck some greenery down in there. So I'm just using a little bit of glue. And I just do a couple little sprigs there of some leaves and some berries to have it look like his hat's really festive. And I'm just placing a little red jingle bell right there on the front. And I had a little bit of the ribbon that I had used on his bow tie. So I just kind of folded that over like it was just kind of a little sash coming out of his hat there and I just thought it looked really cute. You can be as fun and add as much embellishment as you want or make it as simple as you want. Now I'm just putting a little bow on the tag there and I decided that his hat was really, really black and so I just decided to brighten it up a bit with a little, little bit of white paint on my brush, just dry brushing over that to kind of brighten it up. And that makes our little snowman complete. Isn't he just the cutest? I love how this turned out. I think that it is very farmhouse and rustic, but high end and classy at the same time. I think it's beautiful and it would be a great addition to anyone's Christmas decor collection. What do you guys think of him? Thank you so much for joining me today and watching my favorite 23 projects that I made in 2023. I'm so excited for 2024 to start. It's always fun starting a new year. So I want to wish you all a very safe and happy new year. If you have any ideas of any projects you'd like to see me try next year, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I'd love to see what you guys are excited to watch me create. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Happy crafting. If you like the video that you just saw and you want to keep crafting together, here's another video that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.